Did you pick up Prototype 2 on a Steam sale recently? Did you run into issues while starting the game? Black screen, crashes, getting to the main menu and crashing, not liking the dated visuals? Then I have a potential solution for you. Feel free to skip to the overview in the video chapters to forego the rest of my speech. But if you're like me and you bought this game enticed by the low price on the sale and tried to launch it only to be hit with an instant crash to the desktop and various other bullshit because Activision is sending a downright broken game on Steam with no future hope of a patch. Thanks for the money, dummies. Obviously. Then you're not alone and there are ways to fix this. It only requires a bit of patience and some moderate tinkering. This game is downright broken. If you're a regular customer and you buy this game, launch it and nothing happens, you probably feel like you just bent over, spread your cheeks and let Activision stand and deliver. Now, I have no idea how factual this actually is, but apparently the geniuses in charge of developing this port decided that more than 8 cores on the CPU is not possible. Therefore, this game outright crashes if you have more than 8 cores on your processor, or threads for that matter. Which, you know, in 2024 is probably the majority of gamers, so... Uh, the game also throws a shit fit if HID compliant devices are enabled in your device manager, which leads to it reading every input from every device at once, effectively destroying your frame rate. So to give you an overview of what I'll be doing and covering in this video, I'll be showing you the potential ways to get the game to start and run on your system. There are several tweaks and fixes here at work and it varies from computer to computer as well as operating system. The two main fixes that resolved my issue were to temporarily set Steam to use 8 cores as opposed to the 16 I have normally. Now this causes anything launched by Steam to also run on 8 cores. It can easily be done via Task Manager. Secondly, I disabled HID compliant devices in my Device Manager. What does it do? I have no fucking idea. But as a great man once said, in all honesty, I think it's just how the game reads inputs from a controller, mouse, except it reads them all at once, leading to cut down in frame rate and crashing. So that's kind of the gist of it. But 10 days after I started writing this script, a legend by the name of Emus made a mod which theoretically applies all of the fixes into one congested form factor and more or less fixes the game. From what I could see, it works for the majority of the commenters with a few tweaks to the settings, of course. And to add to this, there is a nice texture upscale mod that gives, uh, well, it comes like a pre-packaged pre uh, package <laughs> with a reshade that really refreshes the visuals in the game and gives it a nice, you know, modern look. Vanilla has really low uh, quality textures. Bla uh, it's blatantly due to the fact it was running on the older generation of consoles. While it isn't super bad, um, yesterday when I was playing the prologue, certain textures stood out like a sore thumb and made me want to gouge my eyes out. Here's a comparison so you can see this for yourself and how much of a change there actually is with these mods and without them. Small update to this though. There is no comparison. I lied. As I'm making and working on this video, I could not for the love of me get the texture mod to work. I was under the assumption it was working, but it turns out it wasn't. Reshade debated me into thinking that it was. Text mod is a piece of garbage. No matter which version I tried to use, it just kept crashing and nothing ever loaded and you're stuck with these awful textures. Believe me when I say this, I must have spent at least two to three days trying to find a working texture mod for this game that doesn't automatically crash the game with text mod running. However, I came up with nothing. It just doesn't work for me, no matter what I do, and the game simply crashes and burns. That is the end of the update. If you wish to pursue text mod and trying to, you know, upscale the game with text mod, then, you know, by all means, go ahead. But I uh, will not be covering text mod in this video at all, simply because it's very unreliable. And well, since the game is capped to 1080p, we'll also be using a quick launch option to set the resolution above that. Of course, it will not display this in the options menu, so do keep that in mind. Um, one other thing I can think of is that the actual Prototype 2 mod fix, what it's gonna do, is it gonna let you set your resolution to whatever you want or is it just gonna use your desktop resolution so you can also use that now that about covers it so let's get started the primary thing to try here is the prototype 2 dash crash fix from nexus by emus i tried to set myself without any tweaks and fixes applied and my god it worked albeit with a minor tweak to the ini file you'll want to download this mod and extract its contents to the prototype 2 installation folder 
overwrite any files, but before you do that, make sure you back them up. Open the prototype figs.ini and ensure you set borderless mode to false. I was receiving a black screen due to this. At the very least, it appears to be bugged, so I recommend staying away from it. Now, I suspect it could be due to me having more than one monitor, so obviously your mileage may vary, but for the, for the time being, I just recommend disabling it. Then naturally, you launch your game and it should hopefully start as normal. It is worth noting that the creator of this mod has stated it might not work on all devices. I don't know the technicalities of it, but it's worth to just read through what he posted as the comment on Nexus mods. In case it does not work for you, you will have to do some manual work. This mod, however, works as a general fix workaround, so I highly recommend it. Uh, normally, I would also say to uh, say for you to lock the game to 60 FPS because you know the frame rate fluctuates all over the place if it's above that. But that's because of the HRD compliant devices issue. The base mod, however, has fixed this issue, uh, which pertains to the HRD devices. Uh, you know, all being read at the same time, which causes a huge FPS drop, and this actually in turn allows the game to run at more than 60 FPS without having a shit fit, which is amazing. And I've tried this myself last night with this mod. Uh, I uncapped my frame rate. I was getting way above 100 FPS. You know, a few dips here and there to like 80, 90 at uh, 1440p. So, um, you know, your mileage may vary. And, you know, there was, there was dips and stutters here and there, but, you know, with G-Sync, it was kind of mitigated. So it was not a problem for me. That being said, it's still, you know, a massive improvement over just having a locked 60 FPS. If you're, if you're fine with a locked 60 FPS, then, you know, you go ahead and you cap that frame rate, do whatever works best for you. Um, obviously, PC gaming, got to keep in mind, everyone's got different setups. Now, if the mod doesn't work, you'll want to head into your device manager. Find HRD devices and disable any HRD compliant consumer control devices. In my manager, there was only four, and just disabling those four allowed my game to actually load the title screen, after which I still crashed. <laughs> in general, if you want to run the game, it's a good idea to keep those disabled. From my testing, it hasn't really affected anything on my PC, certainly not my fully modded 200, ver 200 gig version of Honey Select 2. We'll just pretend I didn't say that though, what I mean. Now, secondly, you'll want to set the game to run at half the cores of your CPU. Now, typically, you would do this by starting the game and going into task manager but how can you do that if your game crashes by the time you get to the title screen so a neat trick is to go into task manager uh, find details uh, go to the details and then find steam.exe right click that and select the affinity uncheck all cores and highlight half your cpu cores i have an uh, i9 9900k so in my case that's everything from zero to seven those will be the first eight cores of my cpu or whatever uh, this will make it so the game so any game you launch through steam will technically just be running on half those cores So, you know the cores you selected Once you are done playing the game and want to play something else I strongly urge you to re-enable all those cores so that this doesn't affect your other games And yes, you will have to do this every time you want to play the game There are other ways of doing this without task manager some even automated However, they are finicky and time-consuming and most of you watching these don't want to faff around for 30 minutes with a game you're eager to play so at most this becomes a minor inconvenience you have to do every time you want to play the game so just be prepared for that now start your game and see if it even loads and lets you get into the game if it does then fantastic you can move on to the next step which is entirely optional and is the upscaled resolution pack which doesn't work so obviously it won't be in this video uh, if the game does not work still after all these steps, I will link a steam guide below which has additional fixes and methods which can help you get your game running. I'm on Windows 10 so I cannot testify or confirm what works for Windows 11. You have to experiment a little and see if you can get it working with the steam guide. In theory, the steps above uh, should also work and replicate on 11. Now, the next step would be to adjust the resolution manually. Now, this is obviously if your mod is not working. If you're playing at 1080p, then you can safely ignore this. If you want to go above and beyond, then you'll have to set and, uh, select and set launch options within the game's properties on Steam. Right click the game and go into properties, then paste the following command along with your resolution and desired refresh rate. I strongly suggest playing at 60Hz or capping the game at 60fps. It runs like a sled stuck in rhino shit and it can't, the, the frame rate is extremely inconsistent above 60 now keep in mind this is only if your if the mod doesn't work or if your pc is slightly lower spec uh, machine 
before this mod, before before installing the fix, you know, the prototype 2 fix, uh, with a cap of 60, I did not experience any issues or stuttering or frame drops. And it's more for consistency's sake. If you're sensitive when it comes to flame, fr uh, flame fluctu uh, fluctuations like me, then, you know, it, it's something you may want to do. But like I said, with the prototype 2 fix, this has been completely mitigated for me. Next up, an entirely optional would have been the texture mod, but it doesn't work, so we'll just bin that off. Uh, the reshade will be provided in the description, very straightforward to install, so I won't be providing any instructions for that, just follow what it says on the Nexus page. So to conclude, the game that I'm playing or I've been running, my own version of this, is pretty much vanilla, right? The only thing we've got, uh, we've got is the fix and the reshade. I've done about 75% of this game so far. I'm on the third city map, as you can see in the background. And you might be able to see my frame rate counter, although, although it's a bit small. So uh, obviously don't strain your eyes too much. But with that being said, I do still recommend, even with the prototype 2 fix mod, you cap your FPS to 60 because anything above that can lead to extreme fluctuations. Like the game tends to kind of just go uh, ape shit with the frame rate and, and everything. So if you don't have G-Sync, which kind of, you know, it really helps with this sort of thing, uh, then I highly recommend you just stick to 60 FPS or if you have a lower spec machine. Uh, but with that being said, hopefully this has helped you uh, to run, you know, helped you run the game, helped you fix the issues. Um, if it has, just drop me a like, a comment and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching the video and peace.